one, the, the Drow NPC in DM would tell you that you're shackled together. There's a rope that everyone have to hold on to with one hand, which kind of limits them to having only one free hand. And during this time, uh, because they're prisoners, they have no access to their equipment or items. So once they get into the room, they're seeing that there is a tall pillar with a big ball on top resting uh, between uh, the legs of a spider. And their goal is to transfer that ball without touching it, dropping it on the ground, or getting within four feet of it to a shorter pillar on the other corner of the room. So around the room are a large number of five foot poles, which if they hold on just one end and not grab the middle, they can stay more than four feet away. And they're supposed to form some kind of structure with a pole to transfer that ball at a distance from one pillar to the other. So the original solution calls for um, making a little stretcher with the materials on hand. So there's a scroll tube, there's some metal rings, and uh, there is a little cloth sack that you can kind of stretch around or and 12 one foot poles, which all the poles have magnets on their end, so you can ideally form a little uh, lattice structure. And then as they move into room two, um, they find themselves trapped in a small room with basically nothing to do except a little switch on the wall. So once they throw the switch, uh, the room fills with water up to their chest level, five feet or so. And they're told that a whirlpool has started to form and a water weird comes out to attack them. And the party has to make a reflex save every round to be able to perform an action. Otherwise, they're told spin around on the spot. <laughs> there are several items like boost of free action, the boost of marauder that uh, allows you free action so you don't have to, you're not affected by the whirlpool and you can act normally every round. Room three. Room three is the web room. So when they, when a party comes in the room, they see a spider web on the floor as well as on the ceiling. And there are letters uh, scattered around the web. In the center of the web is a mummy. And if people look up, Above the uh, wall level, there is a small spider looking down on them. So the clue instruct them to look at the web from my perspective. Now this my perspective actually refers to the spider on the wall, which uh, because the, the letters are that are hung above the player's heads, they're hung with the translucent paper. So some of the letters when looking from down under versus looking from above uh, represent different letters. So that's the big trick. So if you read all the letters from player's level, the words form elect one and touch uh, just demon four times. So that means you would pick one party member and go touch a picture representing a demon with a scale. Touch him four times. But if you read it from above, then some of the letters change and it, it means eject one instead of elect one uh, and touch lust demon six times. So that represents you have to all get into the web, have one person step out and touch the succubus six times. Room four is the creepy crawlies and this is where you cross through a, a dark tunnel littered with little spiders and grubs. On the floors we have have uh, walnut shells so it sounded like you're stepping on beetles all the way through. So as they enter the room they're, they're told that they either have a grub or a spider hanging onto them and are trying to burrow into their skin. So this room is a light combat where every party member have to try to fight off the, the grub or the spider sticking onto them. It's a hit or miss, none of the combat modifiers are used and the grubs because they're getting under your skin they're not affected by any of the magic effects. Spells that automatically hit doesn't do anything to them. And once a party member has cleared himself off, they can try to help another party member. And if they hit the correct uh, monster representing that, they could, they could get rid of it for the other party member while also doing full damage to them. The easy way out is actually to use fire. So there are several torches in the room that uh, you can say you're using the torch to chase off the, the grub. The DM will give out a little clue saying around the torch area you don't see any of the crawlies. People can do that or they can use their own flint and steel or they can use magical fire to light up the torches 
and then use the torches. Moving on to room 5 is the uh, ethereal hunter. Let's start with the combat side. Party members enter in, they see a large spider hanging off uh, the corner of the room. Combat board is positioned under it. So the DM gets them to get ready, set it up. Some, some party member might notice there's no combat light on that side. So that, that's a little clue. Trick is, I guess, to get the party to spend some resource, maybe use up some spells. And while the party member is distracted by that, behind them on the other side, an NPC will open a curtain and wheel out an 8-foot actuated spider. It's operated by the NPC. But it, it's still pretty cool because the legs can reach out 6 feet in front of the spider. He'll reach out and try to poke somebody and that person is considered grabbed by the spider. Once that happens, the DM will move the table over to the correct side of the wall and then the real combat begins, whereas the, the big spider on the wall was revealed to be an illusion. The big spider used the, the grab party member as a shield, and uh, that party member can make a skill check to try to escape, and one party member can also try to assist that escape. While, while someone is grabbed, the ethereal hunter has an uh, AC bonus. So the, the ethereal hunter, as he hits you, one of his attacks teleports you to the ethereal plane. So once you, once you go there, you become rather ineffective in combat. So his tactic is to send everyone to the ethereal plane and then bring back one at a time to, to finish them off. If you have boost of free action, again, you're not affected by the, the spider and the spider will try to grab someone else. Room 5 uh, puzzle side is a uh, letter puzzle. So on the clue, you're told that um, you have to find the exit and the, the word EXIT is in all capital letters. And this room has a table that's lit up from underneath and you have four sets of color blocks. Usually uh, when you come in, they're all mixed up. You kind of figure out that out of these four color blocks, you have to spell the word EXIT. So if you arrange them together, and uh, this is where people get confused, they try to spell the letters using the blocks. But what you're supposed to do is use the letter to block off the illuminated table and have the light spell the word EXIT. All right, number six. So here is the, the drow who was assisting the Mind Flayer. She's here nursing a group of spider eggs. So as the party comes in, the drow will come in, makes her speech, and that begins. Her silhouette in the combat board is fairly narrow. There are uh, web webbings on either side of hers, and that if you're using a melee weapon and your slider goes into the web, it's stuck there. Also, um, there's four eggs hanging off the ceiling. So if the if the players concentrate on the drow, every round one of the egg sacs will burst and releasing baby uh, ethereal hunters and they will automatically do, deal damage to the whole party. The drow's uh, crossbows has a paralysis as well. So there's lots of effect that could entangle a party member and take away their action for a few turns. One thing I forgot to mention from earlier is that room 4, you either had the grub or a spider on you. The grub deals a little bit more damage each round, but the spider inflicts you with a poison such that in the next combat, you have to slide with your non-dominant hand. For Nightmare Party, they have to slide with their eyes closed. So on the combat side, this next combat referred to the ethereal hunter, the big spider. But for the puzzle side, you get a double whammy because you get a difficult puzzle and then your poison translates into room 6, which is a difficult combat. Alright, moving on to 7. So let's do the combat first. This is the last room. And the party comes in, they see a, a glowing pool. And then there will be some floating faces representing the souls of the trapped dwarves. So um, once they touch the pool, the um, shadow wraith will emerge. Give us a little speech, and then the combat will begin. So the shadow wraith is not trying to attack the party member, he will try to splash the water from the pool. Once that hits a party member, they have to make a save or have their soul sucked into the, um, the pool along with the dwarves. So the Shadow Wraith is an undead, it's actually an element of death. So all the things that does healing will actually deal automatic damage to him. Whereas things like uh, that cause negative damage will heal him. So this room, this is where the party member's hit point actually doesn't matter anymore because it's you make the savings throw or you don't. Uh, room 7 puzzle is uh, slightly different. You're still seeing a similar pool of souls where the dwarves are trapped. And the dwarves are trying to give you a clue as to uh, how to solve this puzzle. The stagehand under the pool will try to show you five objects. An arm bone, uh, a shield with two towers, a sack of flour, and then a shield with a dog on it 
and a letter mitten. Actually, they have two letter mittens. What these are supposed to do is give you a clue as to which number, because uh, there's 10 skulls that you have to turn to face the pool to solve this puzzle. So each of the, those words basically contains the word of the number. So the arm bone, B-O-N-E, spells one. Then the second one with the two towers is basically a two. The third one is uh, a sack of flour. So flour, if you take off the L, spells four. The one with the dog is represents canine, so that's number nine. And the mitten contained the word ten, and he's also showing two mittens, so they also have fingers on them, so you could also say that's 